everyone. It's Yvonne here to do the reading for the lovely sign of Virgo. Firstly, thank you so much for your support. If you're new on board, welcome. For those who've supported me for many years, thank you for still being here. Um, Virgo, if you are a person who identifies as a Virgo, it's more than likely that Virgo is your sun sign. So keep in mind that you have a number of different signs in your chart, or natal chart, birth chart when you're born. And it means that you can watch a lot of different videos. A lot of people are not interested and that's okay. But if you are, Google a natal chart or birth chart, pop in the details of your birth and you will get where all the planets were when you were born. Now also keep in mind that in other astrology sort of schools of thought, you may identify as the moon sign. So it's really good at least to find out what your moon sign is. Um, but all the other aspects relate to um, an energy in your life that you, like if you were looking for work, for example, you'd want to know what planet was in your Saturn so you can counteract or understand those weaker points of yourself. If you had something like Capricorn in your Saturn, then you would probably be very strong when it comes to your work ethic. But there are other things that may not, may sort of shine out as being limitations to you. Um, I often get asked if you need your birth time. Uh, you can still get a birth chart, natal chart done with chart done without your time of birth. However, you will not have access to your um ascendant or rising that will take a little bit of doing you can get it done by a professional astrologer but it doesn't mean the rest of your birth chart can't be done so you can still do it without your time of birth absolutely um, but really good to look at that because it does give you a lot of insight into who you are as a person by what planets were around you when you were born all right, we're going to use the Cosmic Tarot for your reading today, Virgo. If you are interested in learning the tarot with me, I do now have memberships on the channel. You would need to have a deluxe membership. Um, there are already a number of videos up there. I will be doing another video today. We've started working our way through the major arcana um, and we will start to sort of work through the minor arcana and start to do classes together after that. Um, I do understand that that may be a little bit difficult if you're in different time zones. So I'm feeling that what I will do is split the class and do some in one time zone and some in another. I do have quite a few people from the States and Canada, um, but I do have people speckled around the world. So um, including England, which is very different to our time zone. All right, let's have a look and see where we're going with your reading Virgo. Okay, Seven of Wands, starting out with the Seven of Wands. There is something here that you feel that you've been pushed into a corner on. Sometimes with the Seven of Wands, it can be us standing up for ourselves or feeling that we need to stand our ground. But to me, this feels like you're being backed into a corner on something. So, you know, sometimes people I mean, it could be at work too, so be open-minded about that. But sometimes people will back you into a corner when they want you to do something and perhaps this isn't what you want to be doing. Um, I will pull some more cards to see what it is. You could be dealing with a Libra, Gemini, Aquarius here. Um, but I feel like this person is being quite tough. It could be that you're dating this person and they want something done a certain way. Maybe they're pressuring you to do something a certain way. But I feel like somehow or another you've been backed into a corner. There's a brand new beginning coming when the fall comes around. But whoever this person is, is being very um, persistent on doing things their way. And the What's Cracking reading today sort of talked about control so it does feel to me with the ten of pentacles it feels like it might even be a work situation here maybe you're dealing with somebody that you have a partnership with um, or you're dealing with somebody at work because there seems to be money in the mix here so say for example um, or oh, good example I took on a part-time job and the person that uh, hired me said I want you to work these three days and then they came back after a week or two and said, no, I want you to work these days because we've got somebody else who can work the other days. You can change. And I went, sure, no worries. So I changed. And then later on in the mix, they said, the other person can't work those days anymore. They can only work these days. You need to change your days again. And I said, no. <laughs> and they put me off. So 
I feel like here it could be something like that. I think when you've worked a period of time and doing certain days, then what starts to happen is you start to do things like personal appointments, you start working at other things, and it becomes really, really difficult to keep changing around to suit somebody else. So I feel like there has to be a little bit of give and take there. Um, but in this particular instance, the person was wanting me to do that all the time, not the other person. So for whatever reason, um, that's the sort of energy I'm getting through with this, where somebody wants you to do things a certain way. I don't feel that it's necessary for you to make the changes all the time, although if you're a bit of a people pleaser or you feel that you need to be the one always backing down, changing arrangements, whatever, then perhaps it's time to stand up for yourself here. Let's have a look. All right, so we have the Princess of Pentacles coming through. Uh, Ten of Wands. There's definitely the end of a cycle here. We do have the Five of Swords. There's something you need to back off, walk away from, and head towards the future. So maybe this is a breaking point for you. Maybe this is something you've been dealing with, with a, for a really long time. You could be in a relationship, for example, where your person refuses to do what you want to do and always wants to do what they want to do. Um, and it may be becoming a little bit difficult to maintain. So what we do is because we want to please people in the beginning, we keep giving them more energy. We keep saying, yeah, sure, I'll change. Yeah, sure, I'll change. And then there comes a point where you think, are you approaching me because the other person won't change or are you approaching me because you see me as a pushover? And I feel like here with this, this is being backed into a corner and realising you now have to stand up for yourself. All right, so we have the Wheel of Fortune coming through with the Emperor and the Tower. Wheel of Fortune, three major arcanas on that middle row. Spirit always does that. Always. I nearly always get the major arcana in the middle. Okay. I feel like you're dealing with somebody here. Um, they're coming up as an emperor. So you could be dealing with a manager. You could be dealing with someone who's in a position of power. A position of power and then the tower. To me, this means that whatever this is here you're dealing with, whoever you're dealing with, it is a relationship or a person that you are. Like, for example, what happens if you're in a relationship and your person's seeing somebody else and you say to them, you need to let go of the other person or I'm, you know, but, but perhaps you've stuck around for a while and this person's thinking, well, you've already put up with it for so long and you're getting sick of it, but. And that's why I think maybe you've been backed into a corner because perhaps it's time to say, now I don't want to do this anymore. But the tower tells me that something here is going to be a dramatic change. And I do feel with the Wheel of Fortune here, the universe is saying to you, you know what, it's time. You need to stand up for yourself here. All right, so we have the Seven of Pentacles coming through. Could be dealing with Cancer Pisces Scorpio here. And we do have the Empress at the end. Okay, you have the Emperor in the middle and the Empress right next to it here, down one, and in between the King of Cups, Seven of Pentacles. To me, this feels like it may be a very significant relationship. It could be that you're dealing with someone you see as a twin. Um, but I feel like this person may love you, but on their grounds. So maybe you're not being considered. Um, could be that this person is very focused on perhaps their work situation for example and they keep putting off dates with you perhaps they keep counseling dates or as my ex-husband used to do just go straight over the top of them so yeah <laughs> i'd have a plan for the day and he would come back and say no so and so wants me to help him in the garden and he would go you know and, and there's only so much of that you can do in the beginning you know i heard this thing the other day and i thought it's a really really good thing to think about when someone's nagging at you to change, it means that they care. As much as nagging's not right, as much as that control's not right, it does mean that they, they care in their own way. If they stop nagging you, there's a problem. If they give up and they don't do it anymore, there's a huge problem there. So in this particular instance, I, I bucked a few times. I said, that's not fair. I had the day planned. You know, we have people I told we'd go out for lunch with, blah, blah. And instead of that, and he'd always do it after I'd made the arrangements. So I said, 
in the end, I went, you know what? You're right. So I went on my own. I started doing things on my own. I made no arrangements for both of us. I thought, you can go and deal with that. And then he got upset because I wasn't really doing anything that he wanted to be involved in. So there comes a point where you give up and that's when you start to drift apart. So if you can't have those conversations, you can't have those um I guess getting on the same page with someone, you've got a problem there. And that's what it looks like to me. It's almost like perhaps you've been doing things a certain way for a while. You realize now that you are suffering because of that and you're not doing things that way again. Now, if you're not in a relationship, it could be a work situation. Absolutely. Um, but what it makes me feel, heavy Scorpio energy here, by the way, but it makes me feel you may be do it, dealing with someone that you see as very significant. So maybe this person has said, you know, I want to get married, but it's been three years into the relationship and there's still no offer of commitment. So is that the case here where you'll be backed into a corner as to whether you continue with this particular situation? Maybe you've nagged and you've sort of griped about it for a while and nothing's been done and you're sort of sitting there thinking, am I going to sit here for another three years waiting for this person? If this is a twin, it could be that you're in separation or that your person is with somebody else. And if that is the case, then maybe you're starting to realise that you need to make a decision on whether you continue with this or whether you move on. But whatever it is, there is a decision being made. You're feeling backed into the corner by somebody here and there needs to be a consideration for a brand new beginning. Maybe you're cutting them out. Maybe you're looking for other options here. Um, but I feel like here with this sort of energy, this is part of your soul contract. I feel like somehow or another you're walking away from something that you've invested a lot of time and energy into. It could be that this person's always asking you for money. And you finally realize you don't want to give them money anymore. You could be dealing with this person online and they've started asking you for money. But there is this feeling of being backed into a corner and realizing you cannot continue with this connection anymore because it's draining you of time, man, um, time, energy, resources, whatever it is. But you're definitely feeling to me like you need to make a consideration as to whether it's the right place for you to be anymore. All right, there you go. Thank you. Let's read you an oracle card. We'll read one from the Wisdom of the Oracle deck and that one's come straight out and it's not for you. That was pretty interesting, wasn't it? Card number six. Oh, excuse me. I just bolted that water down and I forget sometimes. If you drink it too quickly, you take in a lot of air. So a clear knowing that something is being denied you and rejection is for God's protection. According to this card, there are times when it appears that no matter how deeply you desire something, no matter how hard you work at something, the result you seek always seems to elude you. Perfect for the reading. It's as if you don't really get to be in the game and you feel like you're watching from the sidelines. The appearance of this card indicates that you're not going to attain what you want right now, that indeed your dreams for that exact thing will not be fulfilled. This is a time to radically accept that not everything is available to you when you want it. Take heart for the benevolent forces who desire the best for you and have a much clearer idea as what, for what is your highest good. Something that will make you happy is on its way. So maybe that's why they're saying you need to make a decision because something else is right behind. Some relationships carry an innate sense seed of failure in them that is obvious from the beginning, but the red flags escape your observation or you refuse to acknowledge them. When a relationship is not meant to be, it's not possible to make it be. Rejection is a sign that you're being protected by the divine. For every pot there is a lid, and this one may not be the right fit. So I will leave you with that. Thank you.